because of me. Huh, hurricane, yeah. Hey, your vision fam, it's Alicia Michelle. I am here because I'm going to be reacting to Australia's entry for Eurovision 2023. If you've never been to my channel before, welcome. If you love the Eurovision Song Contest, you are going to love my channel. So please take this moment to like this video and subscribe. We keeps it real over here. We keeps it real. All right, you know, Australia, they were real extra <laughs> with this announcement. It was real quiet. It was real secretive. And then they told us it was Voyager. Well, they didn't tell us, you know, they dropped the music video, whatever. So then they were like, oh, it's Voyager. And it's a new track. Promise. Ha, hurricane, yeah. Okay, so let's get into it. Pressing play. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Got this electro pop intro. Like the vocal. Have you any ever done anything like this before? I think. Okay. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Well, I'm liking this opening. I feel like they're taking us on a journey. Voyager taking us on a journey. This is thoughtful. Okay. Tonight. Oh, I like this little kind of pre-chorus moment. Your sign. Okay. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. Okay. I'm liking that. How did this become like the rock year at Eurovision? <laughs> like randomly. Like this is like our rock year. So I'm liking this. I think that we've seen them perform live before. So we know they're reliable. I like the fact that we're having a reliable band. So we know that they're going to be able to deliver on the stage. We don't have to worry about them and their competency. Australia has the budget to stage this. You know, even if we just sort of play around with this lighting and this element of the music video, I think that could be really interesting on the stage. Yeah. Okay. I mean, honestly, I would just kind of recreate this imagery on the stage. We can do that in Liverpool. Yeah, we can definitely do that. And we've got a journey with this song. We have levels. It, it, it really does evolve. So that's good. That's what you want to have. You want to have something that has progression. Okay. And the guitar. You know we love a guitar moment, but we got a guitar solo. Okay. This is, this is, this is good. This is good. I just love how this year became a rock year. Y'all know I'm here for it. <laughs> okay. And we have a vocal moment. All right. Okay, Australia. Australia. So, so it's me, so let's start off and talk about the styling. I'm not worried about their styling because we've seen Voyager perform before. We, we know that they know clothes. We know that they're going to give us clothes that are acceptable. Yeah, so I'm not worried about their clothes. I'm not worried about the styling. Honestly, I'm not even worried about the staging because I think for the most part, Australia has done well with the staging. I honestly would say there was only one real staging hiccup for me, even though I wasn't into the selfie staging of... 2017 I guess it was a trend because like everybody was doing like the selfie staging of 2017 so you know they get a little pass for that one because low-key they were on trend uh but I think you know we got love was probably the worst staging package but other than that you know they've been they've been pretty good and thoughtful and I I think the elements 
of the music video, that time when they're so, like when you sort of have the performance shot where they're all in the band and we have the lights, it's almost as if they're in this like cube lighting them up. And I liked the fact that it wasn't just like red lights because I feel like sometimes when you see rock performances at Eurovision or in some of the national selections, it's like we get this really weird, like monotonous lighting scheme, whether it's red or all blue or all green. It's as if like rock can't give us like colors, you know, we could have the rainbow. And so I liked the lighting there. So I do think this lends itself to some really good staging. You know, Australia, we're now in a world of completely 24 seven, a hundred percent televote semis. And of course, that should make Australia a little bit nervous. Uh, obviously, I'm an American. I think the fact that Australia gets played in the televote sometimes is not really fair. <laughs> so let me just be very clear. I think that Australia has deserved more points from the televote in the past, and they have not gotten them. Honestly, all in all, I really like this song. This is not a skip. Y'all know I kind of like a rock moment. I like the fact that the song had levels to it. I like that we had an electronic opening. So where is my issue? I don't know if my issue is Australia. <laughs> so let me just start there. I don't think it's this song, but it's interesting because, you know, Australia is in semifinal two in the second half. Slovenia is there and we got a we have a band from Slovenia and and I'm a little bit I just feel like if I'm if I'm doing a battle of the bands in semifinal two I'm probably going with Slovenia now that doesn't mean I mean sonically these are two very different songs <laughs> you know they're two very different songs so I'm not saying that these songs are similar you know but I I have noticed in the past that people will put things that sort of fit each other together and then kind of pick their favorite I think we can have both of these I think we can have both Australia and I think we can have Slovenia but I think the concern is I think Australia has had entries stronger than this like let's just this is real talk if y'all come to my channel I keep it real okay we've had entries from Australia that have been very very good and more and likely more competitive, arguably more competitive than I think this song. And so I'm slightly concerned because I'm just like Australia has already struggled with the televote in the past. It's happened. We know that. And again, like I said, I think there have been times where Australia deserved more from the televotes, you know, so I'm not saying that it's right, but it is a reality. Some things might not be right, but they are a reality. My concern and pause with this is, is this enough? But I am noting myself that when I went into this year and doing reactions, you know, when you look at some of my early reactions, you know, I want to be realistic, but also at that point, we don't have the playing field in front of us. So I'm going to call out Belgium in particular. You know, when we had Belgium, when I did Belgium's reaction, you know, that was like what? The second, third, that was the third song that we had. And so at the time I was like, well, I like Albania's. Albania's kind of giving us like Eurovision. Ukraine's song, I know some of y'all don't like it, but I really like it. I think it's very current. I think anyone who's like a passive Eurovision viewer would, would be cool with what Ukraine is serving. And so comparing Belgium to it, I was like, huh, I don't know if this is gonna be enough to qualify. That was my question with Belgium's. Well, here we are now. It's February 21st, 9, 11 p.m. And we have a, a couple of more songs in the mix. We still got we still got some in the pipeline, y'all. We got some in the pipeline, so we don't have everything. But we got a nice chunk of songs. And I feel like a lot of the songs I've been kind of like, is this enough? So with this, with that said, I think we're approaching a little bit of like a 2020 year where we probably have like five really, really like exemplary songs, maybe six, if I'm being generous eight or nine really, really exemplary songs, like really competitive. And then we have this sea of sort of like, it's good, it's good, you know, it's not bad. It's like, it's good. And that makes it a little bit more challenging to really say what will qualify. And that's when you start thinking like, okay, this is a year where staging could really make a difference. This is a year where running order could really make a difference because we got a lot of songs that are kind of floating in like, oh, this is okay. So I would say with Australia's, I think that this is good. I think it could qualify, but if it did not qualify, I would not be surprised. I would not be surprised if it didn't. Not even based off of the song, 
but low key the way that the televote, you know, just based off of like past numbers, you know? So I could, I could say this and it's really just historical. It has nothing really to do with the song, but I think considering the song, considering the semifinal that Australia is in, which I'm like, I feel like, you know, this is the wild card semi. I mean, we're calling semifinal one, the bloodbath semi. And honestly, at this point, I don't know what kind of bloodbath it is. It might be a lukewarm, you know, sea of, you know, some some mild, you know, first degree burns. Like maybe that's where we are because I I don't know. I don't know. But looking at semifinal two, you know, I'm thinking Armenia is going to come with some heat. Romania song, I think if they tweak that staging, because his vocal is really good. We could be talking about something. Denmark is qualifying. I know some of y'all don't love it, but if we could go back to the start. I'm just on a bug and a bug. You know, I mean, it's, it's, it's qualifying. Honestly, at this point, yo, Belgium might be qualifying. Because at least we have a competent vocal, you know, and something. And when the world got me going crazy, I carry on. And something catchy. I don't know what Iceland's gonna come together. I watched that first semi and I don't know. I'm waiting. We'll see. We'll see what they got for us next week because his first semi wasn't coming with anything. Greece, I got some hope in Greece. Alika could be borderline. I think she's making it though. So let's just say Estonia's qualifying. So if we got Armenia qualifying, I'm gonna throw Romania in there. I'm gonna throw Denmark in there. I'm gonna say, hell, go on and let Belgium do it. Even though I think Belgium might be in, might be second. I think Belgium might be, I don't know. I don't think it's opening. I think Belgium, it could open though. Um, I think Belgium could be number two in the running order. Uh, let's say that Greece makes it and let's say Estonia makes it. Now I'm saying five from the first half, which is probably unrealistic. So one of those won't make it. Maybe it's Belgium. I don't know. But at least Belgium. And the world got me going crazy. I carry on. Um... So so the second half, we got Albania, which some people are saying is borderline, but we know we got Sasha staging. We're getting something ethnic. Like we're getting something very strong point of view, ethnic, dramatic. I'm thinking Albania actually makes it. (laughs) And Albania typically does well with the televote. Austria, I don't know. I'm thinking Austria might not make it. I'm thinking Lithuania makes it. It might not. But shoot the, do the, Lithuania might make it. San Marino, uh, I won't, I won't bet, I won't bet on it. I won't bet on it. Slovenia is making it. Georgia is probably gonna make it. And I don't know. Poland's got some buzz, so Poland might make it. So I don't know. I, it might not be a cakewalk for Australia. It might not be a cakewalk, but, but I think this is good. I like this. I'll be listening to this. I think this is good. It gives us levels. So we'll see. We'll see. That was my reaction. What do you think? Drop down and talk to me in the comments below. Do you agree with my reaction? Talk to me in the comments below. This is a conversation and you know what? I'm so excited for Eurovision 2023. Don't forget to like this video and don't forget to subscribe. I have so much content coming for you. And if you haven't already, you know I have a podcast, right? Available on Spotify and Apple. Just search it. It's Eurovision for real. You'll love to take a listen. Thanks. Bye.